So let's bring into the conversation our senior Vatican analyst, John Allen. He's in Rome, and architect Colby Karp also here to join the conversation. Now, John Allen, I want to start with you. Uh, so often when we go to our correspondents, our analysts at the Vatican, it's because of some world controversy. Uh, today, you have from every corner of the world, from Queen Elizabeth, the Russian President Vladimir Putin, the Chinese President Xi Jinping, in terms of uh, this is a tragic event, yet one that has brought the world together at the same time. Uh, your thoughts today? Well, John, you're absolutely right. I actually wrote a piece for uh, the news site that I run, Crux, this morning, the headline of which was, we're all Parisians now. I mean, the, the, I, I have been struck, I think all of us have been, by the, the unsolicited outpouring of first shock and horror, uh, but then complete solidarity, uh, not only with the Catholic Church in France, but with Paris, with, with all of France. Uh, as it struggles to come to terms with this. And I think what's underneath that, John, is a recognition that the Cathedral of Notre Dame, uh, although it is a functioning Catholic church, and one of the immediate questions is where the thousands of Catholics who are planning to be there on Holy Thursday, where they're going to go now, and all that has to be sorted out. But uh, from an artistic and cultural point of view, it is also part of the patrimony of humanity. It's the kind of thing that does bring people together. Uh, and, Kobe, help us understand, especially in light of what we just heard from Melissa, that the experts think if this fire had gone on for 30 more minutes, uh, the entire structure uh, could have been compromised. Uh, we do now know. We see what is left intact. Take us through your thoughts on the rebuilding process. Obviously, those wood beams cannot be replaced. How do you come at the giant challenge ahead? So... It, we're very lucky that the foundation and the masonry structure, which is the base of the cathedral, is substantially intact, and that helps us to come back and rebuild and resurrect the wood frame structure above and bring the roof frame back to its original glorious volumes. This is a sculptural, gorgeous piece of architecture, mm -hmm. which is a unique piece that is gorgeous and, and, and being celebrated by all of people who have come there from around the world, both inside and outside. So now we have an opportunity to come back and rebuild it. And not only to rebuild it, but rebuild it to today's means and methods, and hopefully an opportunity to create a fire and life safety system that will help us to make sure that this never ever happens again. This is a glorious masterpiece of architecture that has been celebrated for hundreds of years. And the opportunity now is to bring it back and resurrect it to the way it was. And it will take some time, and it will take some money. But we really do have an opportunity to do that. And, Melissa, to that point, one of the heartwarming things in this horrible 24-hour period has been the outpouring of support and the pledges of enormous sums of money to help with that rebuilding. Uh, update us on that. That's right. And just to be clear, John, it is going to take a lot of time and a lot of money. We've been hearing from experts, heritage experts, who've been saying this is going to cost billions of dollars and it's going to take not years, but decades to complete the restoration of the cathedral and try and get it back to something like its former glory. As you say, so much outpouring of emotion over the course of the last 24 hours and, of course, very concrete pledges of financing already within that 24-hour period. Let me just give you a few examples. LVMH, $226 million pledged. Uh, the Pino family, $113 million pledged. Uh, Total, $113 million as well. L'Oreal and the Betancourt family that founded it, $226 million. So we're going to be coming up by the end of the day uh, to a very substantial amount of money. But it is, of course, going to take a lot more tomorrow. The French president is going to be holding a meeting at the Elysee Palace here in Paris to launch the beginning of an official fundraising drive to try and attract as much of that funding as they can and really spread, in a sense, the privilege of contributing to this as widely as possible. And that's something we've been hearing a lot from the faithful who've gathered here over the course of the last 24 hours, but uh, also uh, people from other faiths and people who are here for other reasons, who had come to see because for historic reasons this mattered so much to them as French people or as foreigners. This is something that they wanted to see. So many of them have said that they will be contributing to that effort on however small a scale to try and help Paris to recover and to try and restore Notre Dame to something like it was just 24 hours ago. The, the privilege, it's a great word. Uh, John Allen, I want to come back to you to that point. As this challenge is before the world, before the Catholic Church, uh, before the global community, you mentioned the hardship of this happening, the horror in some ways of this happening during Holy Week. But you also wrote this morning that in some ways there's an opportunity. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Holy Week is uh, the, sort of the biggest, it is the most sacred and therefore the best attended and most celebrated uh, moment on the Christian calendar every year. That's certainly true for the Catholic Church. Uh, I would imagine all around the Catholic world, John, uh, as these Holy Week ceremonies unfold, uh, particularly once we get into the weekend, we have the Vigil Mass on Saturday and the Sunday Mass, uh, Easter Mass. Uh, you will be seeing special collections taken up. You will be seeing priests from the pulpit encouraging people to be generous in response to this global fundraising campaign. I mean, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, first of all, uh, you know, there is a striking percentage of Catholics all around the world who have been there at least once because it is such a draw as a pilgrimage site. Even if you haven't, it lives in your imagination. It's one of those things that plugs at the Catholic heartstrings. Uh, and whether this, whether a Catholic-specific uh, fundraising campaign is explicit, I think it will be happening spontaneously at the grassroots all around the world, and I would expect it to be substantial. We'll return to this story a bit later in the program. I want to thank you all for getting us started.